that legal action is going to begin very shortly. Now, in the first hour, we have an exclusive world interview with international human rights campaigner Rana Basharat Ali Khan about the current state of human rights, battles around the world, and his personal story of community activism. Rana Basharat joins us live shortly uh, from Bristol. He'll stay with us for the first hour. Then Mariam Javed from Manchester joins us to discuss being a political activist and young, per and young people and politics. You don't want to miss that discussion. So we want to hear from you tonight. You can call us on 01924 231 083 or message us on British Muslim TV across social media. Alternatively, you can send us a WhatsApp message. The number is on the screen as I am talking. Now, the questions we're considering tonight does the Afghanistan withdrawal signal an end to Western foreign policy of interventions and occupations? Question two, what do you make of human rights abuses around the world? And number three, how can we get young people engaged better in politics? Please share your thoughts on the questions we're considering on 01924-231-083 or messages on WhatsApp, post on social media, and we'll read some of them comments throughout the programme. OK, let's start with our first quest question, guest and topic. Around the world, there are human rights abuses. Whether it's in Kashmir, Iraq, Syria, Burma or Palestine, there's been a need for a movement to highlight the injustice and increase awareness. There are some people who have been leading the fight for decades. Rana Basharat Ali Khan is one such individual. Whether it's speaking at the United Nations or leading protests here in the UK and around the world or lobbying ministers, Rana Basharat has a 30-year record of activism, recognised by so many around the world. He's an observer at the United Nations. He says his personal mission is to become the voice of the oppressed, and in that there is no doubt of his personal commitment to achieve that pledge. He's president of the International Human Rights Movement. Rana Basharat Ali Khan lives in Bristol, what a beautiful city, and is joining us live from there. Rana Basharat, a very warm welcome to the programme. It's great to have you on. Thank you, Sheikh, for a wonderful intro introduction. Thank you so much. Now, tell us, uh, 18 months into this pandemic, how have you and your family coped? Right. First of all, I want to say thank you for you and for your team for giving me opportunity to present my story for our youth. In the last 18 months, as we all witnessed for a, a different kind of world, we was not witness, we was never be used to for this. But in, during this COVID-19, we understand the new technology will help us to go to the long way. But same time, we learn we lost so many loved ones from this world. But at the same time, we learn how to help each other, how, how important is to meeting each other in a socially, how we miss this opportunity to, in a public gathering. At the same time, me and my friends from Bristol and from local massages from Bristol, we uh, combined uh, launched the help to the people of Bristol, especially for the homeless, for the people who was not getting any state benefit or are in urgent need. We provide free food and with help of other organizations and individuals and local massages, we distribute more than 5,000 food packages to different uh, community members, regardless of color, culture, or uh, uh, language. So we also uh, give uh, cash money for uh, people who was in urgent need or people who was not getting any social benefit or state benefit from any kind of uh, uh, government support. We provide a rent to the uh, a community member who was not able to get a job due to the COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. But the one thing, Shafiq, which I learned in, in last this 18 months, we was believing that uh, uh, we are living in a uh, global village, but suddenly we realized after the COVID-19, we are nothing without our people. We are nothing, even we are, if we are having a luxury home, big, big lifestyle, nice cars, if we don't have a people around us, it's not, it's not mean that we meet them or not, we are social with them or not, but we need love to see them around us. Yeah, that was yeah. what we were missing. So that give us a understanding. So we need to build up more strong relationship with our community and local uh, people to give more mm -hmm. uh, uh, support to each other in a tough time. 
in a, especially in, during the COVID-19. Okay, so we know that um, Rana Bashar is staying with us for the first hour, which we're really excited about. Lots and lots of questions we've got for you, Rana Bashar. But let's talk, let's start at the beginning of the journey. Tell us about your upbringing, where you were born and grew up. Okay, uh, brother, I born in a Pakistan city, name is Kamalia. And uh, I born on 1978 with a middle class family. My father is goldsmith and we, our entire family is a goldsmith. No one was in a politics before me and no one was ever joined politics before me. But when I was a child, I get a very good, uh, healthy uh, childhood. That gave me opportunity to share my happiness with my school friends and with my street friend and my city fellow. That same time, when I went to the school, I, I, I realized there is so much need to done in our community, especially in a school life and a student, because education that time is still in a Pakistan education. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm mean, just just sorry to interrupt there, but so it was something which you kind of had this yearning for. What what, what was the experience and, and from your parents and stuff like that when it came to human rights? Mashallah, my, my father, my mother, my sisters, my family members, especially my late brother Mubarak Ali Tahar, they was a pillar of my all kind of political background and all kind of uh, uh, sport, financially, morally, uh, everything. They was my main pillar. And after that, I when I went to the school, I get uh, amazing teachers, amazing class fellows and friend and colleague. That gave me boost to join the politics. I was only uh, 21 when I become a student leader and I become my advisor to CM for a Pakistan uh, Punjab ministry yeah. for an yeah. education affair. So I was quite young and it was a good, uh, good experience. I love to ex share my experience with the Pakistan uh, government. I always share on time by time, but uh, that's the whole I start. Okay, uh, stay, stay there, uh, Rana Bashar. We're just going to go to a very quick break. And when we come back, we'll have the continued presence of you to take some of your questions. Uh, don't go every, anywhere. Don't go any, everywhere. Don't go anywhere, people. Uh, we are here waiting for you. We'll take a very quick break and we'll continue the conversation uh, with Rana Basharat uh, Ali Khan. Join us on the other side of these very important messages. Don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to The Health Show. COVID-19 has affected everyone within the NHS and all NHS services. The South Asian adults tend to have more of a chance of getting um, a chronic health diseases. The death of a brain tissue and there is a damage to the brain and that is what stroke is. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Questions with me, Mohammed Shafiq, exclusively here on British Muslim TV. Uh, we're live. It's um, 8.44 here in the UK. We're still waiting to hear what the Transport Secretary here in uh, United Kingdom, Grant Shapps, has decided in terms of that red list uh, review, which is expected tonight or tomorrow. Most likely tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on it. But at the moment, there is nothing to report. So we assume... Um, he will revert to what he has done every three weeks, which is make the announcement on a Thursday afternoon. Um, so at the moment, um, we don't expect anything tonight, but we'll keep a close eye on that. Now, my special guest is the human rights advocate, president of the International Movement for Human Rights. Rana Bashar Dali has been with us. Uh, he's happy to take some of your questions. 01924231083 is our number. The WhatsApp number is on the screen. But if you're watching also on social media, particularly on Facebook Live, uh, very warm welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we're happy to take some of your questions and comments. Uh, Rana Bashar, let's talk about when we think of Pakistan, we often think about the human rights abuses in Indian health Kashmir. 
Uh, what activities have you been involved in over the years to highlight the injustice uh, of the Kashmiri cause? Thank you. Kashmir is very close to my heart, like all the Muslim and especially Pakistani. Kashmiri are suffering from the last 75 years. We, as individual and as an organization, I joined the United Nations in 2017. And after that, I think I saw the different world. I understand how the Kashmiri was uh, ignored by the United Nations and our so-called Kashmiri organizations. Then in the United Nations, we, we witnessed some other stuff that whole uh, Indian and Indian lobby are uh, handling Pakistani and especially Balochistan and sin and minority in Pakistan and leading misleading uh, representation in the United Nations. In 2018, me and my one of my friends, we launched campaign against India. All the India was doing campaign against Pakistan and misleading the world, especially about Balochistan, about uh, Sindh, and about minority in Pakistan. After that struggle, almost one and a half year we spent against that uh, campaign. We identify with the help of other organizations and especially the mainstream media. 265 organizations we cracked down, they was fake, registered by the Pakistan, uh, fake names. They all were registered in, uh, against Pakistan. They was doing campaign against the Pakistan. And in, after that in 2019, first time ever, we was able to stop India uh, organized camp and posters and uh, buses campaign, billboard in Geneva and around Switzerland. That was first time happened in 2019, then 2020. By the grace of God, with the help of our friend, even this year, we are uh, not allow India to put any banner or poster or do campaign yeah. against Pakistan. Yeah. This is our part as individual. But other than that, we launch campaign in uh, Geneva, especially in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah, and can, I, can I just ask you, as in terms of what was happening in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, lost its uh, individual state-level power, um, I think that was Article 370, uh, back in August 2019. Yes. What impact do you think that has had on the human rights uh, in, in, in Indian Hell Kashmir? Uh, let me add you a little uh, update with this. We, we met in uh, head of the Red Crescent in 2018 in Geneva. And she told she is a Red Crescent and all of other organizations was not allowed to go to the Jammu or Kashmir to help the humanitarian or do any work on the ground. Even at the same time, a European Union um, a, a observer group and United Nations observer group was declined to enter in a Jammu Kashmir. So Jammu Kashmir was already in uh, under detention before this uh, 2019 5th of uh, 5th of uh, August. So it was already been uh, under under detention from the from India side from last 70 years. But this impact give us understanding that India is not ready to listen to United Nations. India is not ready to stop his unhuman and unjust. Uh, exercise in a India in a Kashmir. They are killing innocent people from last seventy years. So many children have been kidnapped and mis uh, misplaced from their home, and so many women been raped and been kidnapped and destroyed by the Indian Army. You can imagine there is more than one million people uh, are army uh, in Kashmir. So 